हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू एनजी क्लासेस यूट्यूब चैनल फॉर अ वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज इन कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर वी शेल कंसीडर अ न्यूमेरिकल फॉर द मैकेनिकल सिस्टम शोन ऑब्टेन द इक्विवेलेंट इलेक्ट्रिकल सिस्टम यूजिंग फोर्स वोल्टेज मेथड सो दिस इज द गिवन मैकेनिकल सिस्टम एफ ऑफ टी फोर्स एफ ऑफ टी हैज बीन अप्लाइड टू अ मास एम वन विच प्रोड्यूस अ डिस्प्लेसमेंट एक्स वन एंड देर इज द डिस्प्लेसमेंट एक्स टू and there is a displacement x3 at another mass m2 so now the very first task is to draw the equivalent mathematical model so i need to draw its equivalent mathematical model so for that i need to identify the number of displacements so as there are three displacements i have to draw the three different nodes so let me uh, consider that first let this be the first node x1 and let this be the second node x2 and this be the third node x3 so here i am going to say this is x1 the second node is x2 and the third node is x3 so once that is done i need to check what are there at x1 x2 x3 so if i look at x1 the force f of t has been ap applied which produces a displacement m1 and there is k1 also been connected so i need to indicate m1 and k1 at the node x1 so that is the first task so let me consider sketching m1 and k1 so here i am going to sketch the first mass m1 so let this be m1 and uh, let me extend this further till this point yes so once that is done i need to call this as mass m1 and at x1 there is spring constant k1 as well so that i need to draw as well so here i am consider i will consider the spring constant k1 so let me consider uh, sketching at this point and i will extend this till this point so that i can join together so here i am going to call this as yes so i am going to call this as the spring constant k1 next what is there so uh, before moving further let me join these two points together and i am going to say these are connected to ground along with that the force f of t has also been applied to mass m1 which is there at the displacement x1 so let me also consider uh, applying the force over here yes moving on further so here i am going to draw the force f f of t yes let me also connect this point here which is further grounded so let me connect this to ground so this is the applied force f of t which is applied in this direction so now what is there between x1 and x2 or what is there at x2 so if i consider at x2 there is no mass as as such Uh, there are no independent elements between x1 and x x1 and x2 there is the spring constant k3 so that i need to draw between x1 and x2 so here i am going to consider sketching the spring constant k3 yes so this i am going to call it as the spring constant k3 so let me write it over here k3 then at x3 what i have at x3 at x3 there is mass m2 that is the only element which is there at displacement or at the node x3 so i am going to consider sketching mass m2 which is there at x3 so here i am going to consider that so let me sketch the mass m2 over here so let her ex let me extend this till the ground yes so now i will connect this to ground and i am going to call this as the mass m2 next what is there between x2 and x3 so just uh, let me go back and check between x2 and x3 there is the friction b3 so that i am going to consider over here so here i am going to consider the friction so let me call this as the damper or the dash pot so this i am going to call it as b3 is that fine yes am i done not yet 
between x1 and x3 let's check here this is x1 and this is x3 between x1 and x3 there is the spring constant k2 so that i need to draw between x1 and x3 so let me draw it like this so here i am going to sketch the spring constant k3 yes and i am going to join this where to the point x3 so here i am going to join it and in between i am going to sketch the spring constant so this i am going to call it as k2 is that right yes k2 yes i think i am done now so this is the equivalent mathematical model for the given mechanical system this was the mechanical system for this this is the equivalent mathematical model once this is done i can write the equilibrium equations so let me consider first writing the equilibrium equations so first at node 1 so what is there at node at node x1 there is m1 and there is k1 and f of t has been applied so let me write f of t is equal to m1 how do i write it is m1 into d square divided by dt square of x1 correct plus and there is k1 so let me write that as k1 into x1 correct and what else is there between x1 and x2 there is another spring constant called as k3 so let me write k3 into x1 minus x2 so once this is done there is another element which is known as k2 which is there between x1 and x3 so i'm going to write that as k2 into bracket x1 minus x3 so this is the first equilibrium equation at a node 1 so similarly i have to consider at node the second node which is there at x2 what are the elements being connected at x2 there is no independent element there is k3 which is between x2 and x1 and there is b3 which is between x2 and x3 so that i need to write 0 equal to i said there is k3 k3 into bracket x2 minus x1 plus what else is there there is the friction b3 so let me consider writing that b3 into bracket d by dt of what do i have here x2 minus x3 so this is there at the second node so the at the first node let me call it as equation number one at the second node let me call this as equation number two similarly i can uh, go and write the equation at node three so what is there at node three at x3 so there is m2 and there is b3 between x3 and x2 and there is k2 between x3 and x1 so that i need to consider so first let me write zero equal to the first thing i am going to write with respect to m2 m2 into d square divided by dt square of x3 correct i am writing this with respect to the node 3 is that right yes at node x3 correct plus and there is also b3 where is that b3 b3 is between x3 and x2 so i can write this as d by dt of x3 minus x2 correct plus and there is the spring constant k2 which is there between x3 and x1 so this is what is there k k2 is between x3 and x1 yes so this equation i am going to call it as equation number three so these three are the equilibrium equations that i have considered now so what is the next task next task is to apply force voltage analogy so using force voltage analogy i can write so let me write first force voltage force voltage method so using this force voltage method i have the equations what do i have i can write i can replace mass m with the inductance l and then there is the friction 
I can replace that with the, the equivalent resistance and the spring constant into its equivalent 1 by C and then there is rate of change of displacement dx by dt is the current I and if I want to get the expression for x which is integration of I dt and I can also get d square x divided by dt square which is equal to which is nothing but di by dt so these are the equations that I need to use using force voltage method so let me apply these things for the first equation what is the first equation f of t is equal to in force voltage method f of t is nothing but v of t so let me write v of t is equal to m1 what is m1 m1 is l1 d square x1 divided by dt square is nothing but di1 divided by dt correct plus then I have k1 into x1 k1 is nothing but 1 by c1 x1 is nothing but integration of i or i1 integration of i1 dt correct yes plus k3 what is k3 k3 is nothing but 1 divided by c3 capacitance integration of x1 minus x2 is nothing but I have i1 minus i2 into dt plus k2 what is k2 k2 is nothing but 1 divided by c2 and what I have I have integration of x1 minus x3 is nothing but i1 minus i3 into dt so this is what I have correct this is with respect to equation number one so now let me consider equation number two so again let me apply uh, the force voltage uh, replacements so here I'm going to get zero is equal to k3 what is k3 k3 is nothing but 1 divided by c3 then I have integration of x2 minus x1 is nothing but i2 minus i1 dt correct yes plus then I have b3 b3 is nothing but the resistance r3 d by dt of x2 minus x3 is nothing but i2 minus i3 so this is what I have from the second equation and from the third equation I'm going to get 0 is equal to m2 I'm going to get this as L2 di3 divided by dt correct this is with respect to third node plus b3 b3 is nothing but I'm going to have r3 into bracket i3 minus i2 I hope you people are getting this i3 minus i2 plus the last term k3 k3 is nothing uh, k2 k2 is nothing but 1 divided by c2 and I'm going to have integration of i3 minus i1 into dt so these are the three equations for these three things I need to draw the equivalent electrical network from these three things I need to draw so first thing is I have to draw the loops how many loops are there three loops so three equations are there means there must be three loops so let me call this as the first loop over here first point and this is the second point and this is the third point in this I'm going to draw that yes L1 in the first loop the applied voltage is V of T so let me consider that so here I am going to apply the voltage V of T yes correct so this I am going to call it as the applied voltage V of T this is plus this is minus let this be in this step yes at the first loop I have what I have there is inductor L1 along with that I also have what is that the capacitance C1 so let me also consider sketching of the capacitor C1 yes now I am done so this I am going to call it as L1 this I am going to call it as C1 I have these things at the first loop 
then i1 and i2 between the first loop and second loop there is one capacitor c3 so that i am going to consider over here so this will be yes just let me consider a straight line yes here i am going to call this as the capacitor let me call this as the capacitor c3 correct yes and i'm going to join this i'm going to extend this further yes what else i have now if i check uh, 1 by c2 i1 minus i3 so that uh, let me consider at the later stage consider the second equation now 1 by c3 i2 minus i1 which is already been drawn r3 between i2 and i3 so what i do is let me extend this straight line till this point and here i am going to consider sketching of a resistance yes and later i am going to join these two things and in between i am going to have one resistor over here so this i am going to call it as r3 correct and then let me join these two points yes yes here i'm going to have uh, what else i'm left with r3 is done c2 c2 must be drawn uh, c2 is already drawn and uh, no c2 must be drawn at which is there between i3 and i1 so here i'm going to sketch c2 so this is going to be the capacitor c2 which is between first node and the third node that is very important so here i'm going to sketch the capacitor c2 and i'm left with l2 which is there at the third loop it must be over here so here i'm going to sketch the inductor which is known as l2 so this is going to be the inductor l2 so ultimately i just have to join all these three things sorry so let me consider a straight line and let me join all these three points yes so this i'm going to join this till this point and this is already being joined and this i'm going to join this further yes this is how it is in the first loop i have the current i1 and in the second loop i have the current i2 and this i'm going to call it as the third loop here i'm going to call the current as i3 is that done so only thing is uh, the capacitor whatever i have written it is 1 by c2 1 by c3 and 1 by c1 uh, but i have drawn c1 so into bracket i am going to call this as 1 divided by k1 is that fine because i need to draw 1 by c1 i cannot do that so hence i am going to call this as 1 by k1 here i am going to call it as 1 by k3 for the capacitor c3 and there is c2 this i am going to call it as 1 divided by k2 yes this is how ultimately the final diagram looks like this is the force voltage method using that this is the obtained equivalent electrical network yes this numerical i have explained it step by step i hope you people have understood if there are still any doubts please let me know them on to the comment section and i am happy to answer those doubts thank you so much for watching